Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing polar graphs. Specifically, we're going to be discussing circles and the meniscus. Let's start off with the circle. The equation for the circle in polar form is r equals a cosine theta, or r equals a sine theta. The diameter of the circle is given by a, and both the circles have a point at the pole. For the cosine graph, you're going to have polar axis symmetry. Your polar axis symmetry test is to replace theta with negative theta. Since the cosine of theta is always equal to the cosine of negative theta, these will always be equal, and you will have polar axis symmetry. Since you have polar axis symmetry, the center of the circle must lie on the polar axis. With the sine graph, you're going to have symmetry with respect to the line theta equal pi over 2. That test is to replace the sine and the angle with their negatives and negative a sine negative theta is going to simplify to a sine theta. Since we have symmetry with respect to the vertical axis, the center of the circle must lie on the vertical axis. Let's try to graph one. Suppose we had r equals 4 cosine theta. Well, we know this is going to be a circle that has a diameter of 4. We know it's going to have polar axis symmetry since we're using the cosine. We know it's going to have a point at the pole, and then we can conclude that the center of the graph must be on the polar axis at 2. It's probably enough for you to get a sketch of your graph, but you might want to verify some points as well. So let's plug in 0 for our angle measure. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we end up with a radius of 4. That's going to give us this point on the polar axis at 4. Let's try to plug in pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that gives us a point at the pole. And then let's try another point at pi. Suppose we plug in pi. Well, the cosine of pi is negative 1, so we ended up with negative 4. Well, if we go over to pi and then go back over on the other side of the pole to negative 4, we're going to end up at the same point that we already found. If we plug in 3 pi over 2, we get out 0 again, so that's another point that's at the pole. You might want to try a few more points between, let's say, 0 and pi over 2, just to make sure that you've drawn your circle correctly. The next ones that we're going to be talking about are the limniscus, often called infinity graphs or figure 8 graphs. With these, the equations are r squared equals a squared cosine of 2 theta, or we can use a squared sine of 2 theta. For both of these, the distance from the pole to the tip of the petal is a. And both the graphs will have points at the pole. With the cosine graph, of course, you're going to have polar axis symmetry. But it also has pole symmetry. In other words, you can take the entire graph and flip it 180 degrees, rotate it 180 degrees, and it will land onto itself. Now our test for symmetry with respect to the pole is to replace theta with pi plus theta. So when you're looking at the cosine function, in simplifying that, we get cosine of 2 pi plus 2 theta. Well, when you add 2 pi to any angle measure, you're really just finding a coterminal angle. So that's going to be true for the cosine, and it's going to be true for the sine as well. So the other graph that um, has a sine graph in it, you're going to have symmetry with respect to the pole as well. This graph also has symmetry with respect to the line theta equal pi over 4, which is the diagonal line going halfway in between the axes. And we're going to look at some points on that one as well to show that. OK, let's try one. We're going to graph r squared equals 9 cosine of 2 theta. We know that it has both polar axis symmetry and symmetry with respect to the since we're using the cosine. We know that a is equal to 3. Remember that in your equation it was a squared cosine 2 theta. So the 9 is squaring of a, so a must be 3. That means that there are points at 3 on the polar axis. So testing that out, by plugging in 0 for our angle measure, we get r equals plus or minus 3. So we have points at 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. So you can see those are here on the polar axis. This is at 3, 0, and this one is at negative 3 and 0. Now we also want to ver verify the point at the pole. 
So by plugging in 0 for r, we get um, 9 cosine 2 theta equals 0, or we get an angle measure at pi over 4. And you can kind of see that on your graph as you come into pi over 4, the graph is um, heading in towards 0. By the time you get to pi over 4, it is at 0. Okay, so we want to be able to find a couple more points. So what I did was I chose pi over 6. So looking at the pi over 6 line, you can see this point P here. It's a little bit over 2. Let's go ahead and verify that. So we have it pi over 6 simplifies down to pi over 3. The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So we have r squared equals 9 halves. Then of course we took the square root, so we have 3 over the square root of 2. And then what I did was I rationalized it to give an exact answer. But in order to graph it, I have to estimate it. So it's around 2.12, which is what we expected. Now what you can do is um, use symmetry to find at least three other points. So, so far we have um, two points on the polar axis, the point at the pole, and point P. Since this has symmetry with respect to the polar axis, we can take point P and we can flip it over the polar axis and find a corresponding point at uh, 11 pi over 6. We could also rotate it 180 degrees and find another point that corresponds to it at 7 pi over 6. Then we can take the point at 7 pi over 6 and flip it back over the polar axis and we get another point at uh, 5 pi over 6 and they all have the same radius length. So that should be plenty of points for you to graph um, the curve pretty accurately. Okay, let's try a sine graph. So we have r squared equals 9 sine 2 theta. Since we're using the sine graph, we know we have symmetry with respect to the pole. And we know that the tips are 3 units away from the pole. Now, um, I said earlier that this has symmetry with respect to the line pi over 4 equals theta. So I'm going to plug in pi over 4 into my equation. And you can see that we ended up with 3 and negative 3, which are the tips of the figure 8. And you can go ahead and graph that. So you have the, the point at the pole and the two tips that you needed. And you might want to verify the point at the pole. So I ended up with two angle measures that give me um, a 0 radius length, and that's at 0 and pi over 2. So you can verify that it has points at the pole. Now you might want to find a few more points. So in this case I um, chose to use pi over 12 and I ended up with that um, 3 squared so 2 over 2 again. So we have um, that point right about there. And then what we can do is use symmetry to find other points. Now if I take pi over 12 and I flip it along the line um, theta equal pi over 4, I'm going to get a complementary angle to that one which is 5 pi over 12. So they're going to have the same exact radius length. And then if I take those two points and rotate them over into quadrant 3, I'm going to find two other points that have the same radius length as those. So we have at pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, and 17 pi over 12 have the same radius length of 3 squared, so 2 over 2. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.